Hi everyone, welcome to the first class. So we are going to start something which is very important and interesting at the same time. In fact, all the concepts of computer science have been inspired from the real world only. So uh, even if you look at concurrency, this also is inspired from the real world. Let me just give you a very simple example. Let's say you came back from your office to your home and it's night already, it's almost 8 p.m. in the night, you are hungry, you're almost starving, you want some food and you realize that there is one office work that is pending. Uh, you might have to write an email, you might have to send it to your manager. So what you did right after coming back to your home is you probably changed your clothes, you got fresh and then you went to the kitchen. Immediately, you took out some vegetables, some rice, some herbs, spices, you cleaned them, you cut them, you put them inside a pressure cooker, mixed them well, and then you finally put that pressure cooker on the burner. Now, when the pressure cooker has been put on the burner, the food is already cooking. During that time, you have two options. Either you can wait or you can make use of that time to draft your email which you had to send to your manager. Which option would you want to go for? Of course, the wiser option is to go ahead and draft your email. Because when the food is cooking, you are no longer needed there. The pressure cooker is doing its job. Right? So, if you look at this scenario, there are two tasks that you have to handle. The first task is to cook food and the second task is to draft email. Right? But when the food is being cooked inside pressure cooker, you can make use of that time diligently to draft your email. Okay, if you look at this entire scenario, while you are engrossed in the other task, which is drafting of an email, it might happen that your attention may be required for first task. What if pressure cooker gives a whistle? So that is a way in which task A or the first task can signal you for your attention. And then you can go back, take a look at the pressure cooker, see whether everything is good. If everything is good, you can again come back and start your next task, which is drafting the email. Again, the pressure cooker, if it gives a whistle, you can go back, check, come back and continue with drafting your email. So basically in this entire process, what we have seen is that you are able to perform tasks in a concurrent mode. How you are able to do that? There is only one instance of you. But while you are drafting your email, you can already see that the first task is happening. You are no longer needed there. That's it. You have engrossed yourself in drafting the email. But if task one requires your attention, it has a way to do that by signaling you. And how it does that is by simply giving you a whistle sound. Right? Okay, so we have seen that we are used to performing things in a concurrent mode in the real world. And this has served as an inspiration for computers also. Don't you think that computers also can perform tasks in a concurrent manner? The answer is yes. Let's say computer is performing task A. And then after some point of time, it realizes that CPU no longer needs to work on top of task A. So the CPU now can pick some other task. And once that task is done, it can again switch back to the first task. So this was a very simple introduction to concurrency and how it is something that, that has been inspired from the real world only. Okay, now let us take a look at this piece of code. So you can see that we have an integer array, which is defined here. And then uh, we are just scanning some input from user. We are basically scanning a string, okay? After that, we have a piece of code which is responsible for sorting this array, okay? And after sorting the array, we are just uh, printing out the string that we had taken as input from the console. And then we are printing the sorted array. That's all. That's what we are doing. Okay, now let us try and understand few things. Let's say when you run this program, what happens? So first an array would be declared inside your memory and then this scanner variable would be created. And then when the control comes to this line, CPU will now be free. Why CPU will be free? Because now your program will wait for the user 
to write some string on the console. So basically, we have halted ourselves to read the input from the user. During this time, when your CPU is idle, it has an opportunity to latch on to some other task. So if you look at this task, which is responsible to sort the array, it can be performed, isn't it? It can very well be performed in the duration when we are waiting for the user to print something in the console. So guys, let's understand it realistically. Let's say it takes two units of time to run the first two lines of your code. Okay, and now it takes user five units of time to write something on console. Now, during those five units of time, you can latch on to this task and perform sorting. Let's say sorting of this small array takes two units of time. So during those five units of time when user was typing something on the console, you would already have sorted your array and then you would have actually saved a lot of time on a whole. Isn't it? Because think of the serial manner. If you execute your program in a serial manner, that would mean that you spend two units of time here and then you spend five units of time here and then you spend two units of time again here. So two plus five plus two is going to be nine units of time. But in the other case where you latched on to this task while this task was uh, waiting for user input, you have actually completed everything in two plus five, which is seven units of time, right? Because you made use of that time when CPU was free. So this example gives us some amount of idea that whenever we have a task running which has got nothing to do with CPU. During that time, we have two options. The first option is to latch on to some other task and make use of CPU. And second option is to keep waiting. That is the stupid option. That is something which we should not do. So this is one of the biggest benefits of concurrency. Whenever our CPU processor is idle, instead of waiting, we can latch on to some other task. And doing that helps us save time. Okay, one more thing. Can we directly jump on to any task of our choice? So let's understand it in this manner. Let's say instead of scanning a string, instead of scanning a random string, let's say we were scanning an integer k and then we were sorting the first k elements of the array. If that was the case, then it would have meant that this task which is responsible for sorting first k elements of array is dependent upon the output of this line, is dependent upon the input which is given by user on the console. In that case, you would not have concurrently executed this task while the other task is still pending. So keep it in your mind. You can't concurrently perform everything. You can only concurrently perform things if there is independence between them. If there is independence, of course you can perform concurrently, right? But if you have such sort of dependency, then that cannot be performed. So this was a very trivial example, which gave us an idea that there are so many occasions when our program is running, but CPU processors are idle. During that time, CPU processor, if it latches onto some other task, then uh, this is what concurrency is to at least begin with.